This is a Sports Radio Live podcast covering your world of sports. Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. It's weekdays at 3 on 99.3 Talk FM, the talk of East Texas. The man who writes uh, college football for the Associated Press, and he's been doing it since 2005. It's Ralph Russo. How you doing, Ralph? I'm real good. How are you? Hey, you can put me down for blacking with the with the crab sauce on there. That would be for June you 17th. Got a, you got a deal, dude. It, in fact, sure. we'll, we'll box it up and send it your way, okay? That sounds excellent. I'll certainly get some good stuff from down there. I, I know it. We'll, we'll take care of you. All right, so tell me what the, I, I see today now, and I'll ask you to give me an update on where we are as far as a college football playoff is concerned right now, but uh, I'm hearing a lot about uh, selection committees today and people who are now wanting to get on it. Bobby Bowden's name came up today. What do you know about that? Yeah, it does seem like there's been a wave of support for trying to take – uh, some of the uncertainty out of it and some of, uh, uh, you know, the, the uncertainty that comes with polls. Polls, no matter, how, and listen, you know, the AP, we've been running a poll for a long time and we like to think we do a really good job, but no matter what, a poll will always be viewed as in some way biased for, for people. I mean, you know, even if it's not, even if you have 60 people who are above reproach, you could always pick at polls and make them seem like there's some bias included, and that, that, that's troublesome to the BCS. I mean, especially now that the AP is not a part of that, they've had to go with the coaches' poll, and clearly there's some possible, you know, uh, conflicts of interest there. The Harris polls had some, you know, what, what appears to be conflicts of interest, whether it is or not, it appears to be, and that's a problem. So there's been sort of a wave with the Big 12 interested in this, uh, I think that the, the Big Ten has shown some interest in this, of, of getting together like a blue panel committee and having the four teams that are going to play for college football's national championship in a couple of years chosen by this committee, kind of the way they do it in college basketball. I think the problems with that might be, first of all, it's a lot more pressure on these people because you're only picking four, four teams, but I, I also don't know if you're necessarily going to get away from the perception of bias. But there does seem to be a wave of support for that, but I think there are some problems that come with it. Yeah, I see names like uh, former Texas A&M coach R.C. Slocum. We see former Ohio State coach John Cooper, uh, Georgia coach Vince Dooley. All these guys are legends. Um, but uh, obviously some would be weighted toward the south and others would be weighted toward the Big Ten and places like that, I would assume. Yeah, I think you need to get away. I mean, I, listen, and this is no knock on some unbelievable coaches, Hall of Famers, but I think you need to get away from guys who are deeply tied to particular schools or conferences. And when you have coaches, I think you have that. You might be able to find some people who have been administrators, um, athletic directors, conference commissioners, guys who may be in or, or around the game still in some way. But I think, you know, again, if you have John Cooper sitting on that committee – and the choices between Ohio State and, let's say, the University of Washington, if Ohio State gets picked, whether or not John Cooper was biased is not the point. The pro- problem is people are going to look at that as him being biased. You know, there's another issue that could come with the selection committee, and a lot of people I've talked to in television and even in, in college sports will tell you, it's good to have some type of standings for people to follow along with as the season plays out to see teams jockey up and down, and as flawed as the BCS standings might seem, it it draws people in in week six to see, okay, where my team stands in week six and where they need to be by week 11. And if you have a selection committee, you might lose a bit of that element uh, where at the end of the season, all of a sudden, you'll have four teams picked. You'll be following along with the polls, but you won't know exactly where your team stands. And that's something that I know is being considered. I said that's something that really grabs people's attention. You know, the thing about this whole deal, Ralph, and I may be a lone wolf in this, and that it scares me to see college football go to a playoff because the regular season is so great. I mean, every weekend you've got three or four ball games that could literally, you know, change the uh, the direction of orbit of the earth. And, and I'm just afraid with a playoff that something might happen to water that down. And then you got college basketball where nobody cares about the regular season until we get into March Madness. Yeah, and I, listen, that is... Uh, that is a fair concern, and, it, and you, as much as people poo-poo that concern a lot, 
I think it is. A, it's a legit concern, and it's a legit concern, and, and it's and it's something that the people in charge, when they talk about trying to protect the integrity of the regular season, I, I think that they mean it. I think, me personally, I've been a playoff proponent, so I'm coming at this from a little different angle as you. I think even maybe a little bigger one would be better, but I think that a four teams. And if you put a certain amount of emphasis, maybe not total emphasis, but a certain amount of emphasis on conference champions, uh, maybe reserving three spots for a conference champion and one for a team from any conference that doesn't win its league, I still think you're putting a premium on the regular season. And in some ways, if you tie this thing and put an emphasis on conference champions, you may be putting even more emphasis on the regular season because now all of a sudden those conference races – become even more important and what you also do is you take a little of the subjectivity out of it and actually have teams winning games and advancing to something so but I think, what happens i think what happens, is ralph, small enough. what happens ralph though if one of those conference champions is a team that gets hot at the right time and has four losses in a regular season let's say a south carolina for instance a couple of years ago playing in the sec championship game you know, I, I understand that, 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 that being a little troubled about that, but if you really play it out, if you have a situation where it would be one of the top four, like it, you have to be a, a three of the three conference champions rated in mm-hmm. the top three, I think what would be more likely to happen is that team with four losses probably wouldn't manage to get itself into the playoff. I think that mm-hmm. would be more likely as you might have a, a really good team get knocked out at the end. But I don't necessarily have a problem with that. In other words, if LSU lost to lost to Georgia last year, you know mm-hmm. that might have knocked them out of the that might have knocked the Tigers out of a playoff situation. But it, maybe it moves Alabama or even Georgia in with two losses. I don't think you're gonna. I, I understand your fear, but I don't think a four loss team or a five loss team is going to sort of sneak in the back door because you're only limiting it to two or three conference champions. So if the SEC champion ends up with being a four-loss team that had a stunning upset, well, that maybe doesn't open the door for the four-loss team as much as maybe it opens the door for that one-loss ACC team. Okay. It seems like there's a lot of distance between what the Big Ten wants and what uh, the Big 12 and the SEC want. Uh, am I wrong in that perception? What's your take on where everybody is right now? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, uh, Brian, I don't think you're wrong. I just think that the, the message that's come out is to sort of create a little conflict. And I think we in the media, that's not to say that people are being, uh, are not reporting facts, but I think it, it's, it's tempting to sort of re- relay where the differences are and not mm-hmm. where the common ground is. I think there's a fair amount of common ground here. I think that there's some rhetoric and some positioning and some posturing going on for the details that need to be sorted out as far as um, how you pick the teams, where the team, where the games are played, um, you know, who gets them out, what certain amount of revenue, whether how much the bowls will be involved, and there's going to be a little negotiating back and forth on the details here. So I think each league is want to want to position themselves so they get the best end of those negotiations. But I also feel like there's a lot of common ground here uh, to, to to work with. So I don't necessarily like view this as that this is going to be a blow up situation and all of a sudden they'll be battling and and they decide to throw up their hands and walk away from the table. I think that they're just, you know, positioning themselves for negotiation where there's a lot of common ground, and they'll, and they'll come up with a, with a spot that maybe everybody doesn't get exactly what they want, but they get enough of what they want to be happy with this. Now, there's supposed to be another meeting there at the end of the month. Is that correct? And, what, and will that decide it then? You know, June 20th in Chicago, um, the commissioners get together, and I, I think... You know, you know, there there are no hard deadlines with the BCS. There never seems to be any hard deadlines, though. In, they do need to have something together in the fall to bring to their TV partners and, and hammer out a deal. So there's something of a hard deadline in the fall. I, I, I do think that a, a, a lot of the anticipation is that on June 20th, the commissioners will get together, with marching orders from within their conferences. Say, this is what I would like to see. Here's what my conference would like to see. Let's hammer the details out and come up with something we can live with. Whether that's the absolute finished, glossy product 
I think is to be determined, but I would expect them to come out of June 20th um, or certainly by the end of July with something that's really workable and really firm. You now, if somebody was kidding around, you know, by, you know, once July starts, all the presidents go on vacation. So you really don't <laughs> want to like, you really don't want to leave it much past July because now you're into, into, into August and September. So I think by the end of June, they want something pretty firm with maybe a few uh, minor details to work out. Minor to them may look big to us, but, but, but want the, they want the major details worked out by them. Last question. Is there any scenario that you see there where Notre Dame ends up with favored nation status also? Um, no, not necessarily, but I also don't think Notre Dame will come out of this in a bad way. I don't think they're going to have to bend over backwards to make... A, have a spot for Notre Dame that where Notre Dame also is comfortable. Uh, you know, I think the, the 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 end result of this could actually be a little more wheeling and dealing allowed by Bowles and a little more free market. So maybe Notre Dame won't be able to have an easier track to the top four to get into the playoff. But I think Notre Dame may end up with a few more soft landing spots outside the playoff, better bowl situations if they don't make the playoff. So I'm of the opinion that Notre Dame Notre Dame is going to turn out just fine because if you open up the free market, everybody wants Notre Dame. So I think that there's some good spots for Notre Dame without necessarily, you know, bending over backwards to accommodate them. All right. Hey, Ralph, it's so great to talk to you. Thank you very much for doing this for us. We really do appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Anytime. And we will try to figure out a way to get that uh, crawfish and steak up to you somehow, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds excellent. I'll be waiting. Good deal. Ralph Russo from the Associated Press, the National College Football Writer on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM. This is a Sports Radio Live podcast covering your world of sports. Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. It's weekdays at 3 on 99.3 Talk FM, the talk of East Texas.